Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Love Tribe with yours truly, Carla B. Um, today we're going to talk about parenting in 2024. We have a lot of great tidbits to give you guys um, from different perspectives. Um, but before we get started, let me hit you up with my podcast jam. Love Tribe. Ooh. All right, so we're here today. <laughs> We're here today with, uh, she's laughing because I have my producer guy sometimes, but other but, times it's just me, poor little, little old me trying to put this together. We do it. And you do. know what? Women, we do this. So, um, we make it happen. The channel that is about, you know, spiritual development, uh, it is about emotional intelligence topics, discussing differences in order to understand how we're all actually similar, um, is all about bettering your mental health because that's, you know, what guides your, your life. So today's topic is going to be about parenting in 2024, Lord Jesus. Um, and we have a lovely guest with me today, back in the seat, <laughs> my girl, Sandra Lopez, Lopez Gallardo. Gallardo. Thank okay. You, girl. So you <laughs> I love being with you. Thank you for being here with me, sure. girl. I'm, I'm glad to be here. Oh, my God. I've missed you. Last time we talked about teachers and teacher we pay. We did. We did. Do you have any follow-up insights related to that? Hey, yes. <laughs> I'm pretty much one track. Boom. Just pay, pay us, please. Pay us, okay. Yes. So today we're going to talk about parenting. Um, I worked as a teacher in the uh, school system for 20 years. Sandra has worked, uh, how, how long have you been in the, in 20, the years. 20 years? 20 also, years also, yeah. So we That's have- because you work in the building and I work in a portable, we barely, yeah. so we don't see each other. It's we're like different, different worlds. Different planets. Yep. But we definitely have a lot of insight when it comes to uh, parenting. Did it just get brighter? Yeah, it did. The light, that light got really bright. Wow. Odd things happen when you're in a love tribe podcast. Every time <laughs> something happens, I'm serious. I think I do. spiritual I things are around us all, all the right, time. Let's make it work, girl. Let's make it work. I'm gonna make it work. Okay, I don't need the producer guy. I got the good energies <laughs> lighting up our face. Did you see that? I did. I was like, woo! This okay. is this is what I talk about. One thing that I talk about on this channel is about spiritual warfare, so people can be aware more of how that is happening. That is existing. Um, and be less likely to take things personal, you know? Uh, it's never your loved ones that are battling you uh, or, or saying the things they say to you. It's always another force that is, is propelling them to be that way, sometimes just to damage your relationship. So you need to be aware of that. Um, and let's bring that into parenting. There are some issues that Sandra has seen and I have seen through the course of our teaching career <laughs> yeah when it comes to parenting i have a belief tell me not every person should be a parent okay. that is my belief people get <clears throat> why do you say that because so, tell me more spiritual sorry. girl not every person should be a parent because you know why do i say that because there's yeah. a lot of kids because that's a big statement you know I've that's a heavy duty statement it is. why would you say that i've witnessed a lot um i first of all i think people fall into that ring of moreau of like going to school, finishing it to a certain level, maybe going to college, and then, oh, yeah, let me meet a person and have kids. Right. It's automatic. It's not like a conscious decision of, like, right. I'm going to have a kid and yeah. I need to adjust my life. It's how society, you know, makes you believe this is what you should do. It's an old pattern that we're used to. So it's almost like, are you having the kid because it's a conscious thing you want? Right. And desire or it's the you thing have to do, it's, or it's the thing to do, and check then the box. Yeah, check the box, and this is what I've done. Yeah, you know? I don't mean to be insulting. I'm just saying it's okay to admit <clears throat> that not everyone's designed to be a parent. Right. Um, you and can... while she said that, talk about insulting. I just want to say <laughs> that we're going to keep it real because that's what we do. Because we're yeah. from Jersey. Go ahead. If you're not happy with what we're saying, just click the off button. Click like off. Kevin Hart said. Kevin Hart says people have the option to turn off the button if they don't like what they're viewing. Yeah. So for me, I speak for me as myself and as a woman, and as a teacher. If you don't like my opinion, I love you, but okay, this is just my opinion. If you don't like her opinion, we love you, but turn it off. I if have you're not happy about you. it, just it's okay. Walk away. It's not for you. We are just sharing what we think, what we've seen as educators. From experience. From experience. We've lived this as educators with parents. 
there are some issues that I would like to be on the same side with parents. I would yeah. like them to see from a teacher, from a perspective of a woman who's had kids that are older, successful kids, here's how it goes down. Rocket because scientist kids, but just it's not just successful. They're, they're doing okay. Woo. I'm just saying, as a, as a woman who's got some experience under her belt, like, I can talk about it, and I know what I'm talking about. Yes. Like, I'm not just, after 20 years of teaching and raising kids, you've got a beautiful girl in high school. Yeah. We kind of know what's going on. Like, you could talk to people who have a little bit of experience. When I want experience, you know, when I want info, I talk to a pro. I don't go to TikTok to look for the newest thing. I need to talk to a professional. <laughs> give me something. Give me somebody successful where they're going, and I'll talk to you about my issue. Yeah. You know? I think the the biggest problem people have when I say that everybody should be a parent, um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm very blunt because I'm, I'm a Sagittarius, but I'm just, yeah, my nature is blunt because I feel like. Uh, people say I'm blunt. You should see her. <laughs> yeah. Truth, truth leads to healing, yes. you know? So yes. when I say not everybody should be a parent, it's really to free a person that would look at themselves and be like, I'm, I was never designed to be a parent and right. accept that. Mm -hmm. And now, okay, well, in your position, what can you do to make, to, to make it better, to make it work? But people want to um, not work on it. They, do, they, they, they get distracted or they use things as distractions to not focus on the fact that they are not accepting that they themselves know I, I'm not designed to be. A, I, I was. I'm not designed to be a parent, uh, and that's okay. It's okay. But it's a to little feel too that. late after you have a child. After you have a you child, know, you try to make it better. It's too late. Like you know, this is very crass, but my mama would always say, "Once you open your legs and you have your thing and you see the acceptance, <laughs> you know, you're like you see the pregnancy signs is positive. That's it, man. You have signed on the dotted line. You like have a that's choice. it. Once you're committed, you're in for the next twenty or so years. Mm. You can't say I can't do this. This is too hot. Mm -mm. Doesn't work that way. You are in. There's no way of getting out. It's like the mob in Jersey. Yeah. If you're in, you're in. You're not getting out. That's how it rolls. So I also say that not everyone's designed to be a parent because right. I'm one of those individuals that looked at myself and said I'm not designed to be a parent. Like. And I consciously wanted marriage and children. Did you? I, yeah, I even made career choices instead of medical school, going to teaching so I could be wow. a more present mom and a present wife yeah. and mm -hmm. just present as the, the woman in the house, in, in the family uh, right. structure. Um, but I ended up being a, a single parent. Um, and I ended up, at, when I, once I became a single parent, looking at myself and just thinking, I don't think I was designed to be a parent because I ended up alone, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's why I can say... Hmm confidently that many people think they just don't say it they don't share it they don't want to bring it out and if they think about think it or it's if it's in their mind those are the ones that'll probably get insulted when i say yeah. not everyone's designed to be a parent it doesn't right. mean that you're doing a bad job it just means accept that and how do we move past that well we move past that by starting to be more conscientious of our kids as human beings and not accessories that represent you directly I think a lot of issues have the, I want to have, like, a lot of issues begin with women who, I want to have a baby. It's like, yeah, great. Mm. You have a baby for a couple of months. Then you have a toddler. Mm. Then you have a preschooler. Then you have, like, it continues on. You don't get to push the pause button where it's the best for you. Like, it just doesn't work that way. The baby grows up, and you have to keep going chapter to chapter with what the child needs. And that means all the people that the child interacts with. Mm -hmm. Speaking of teachers, because yeah. there's a lot of us, and once you have a child, you're going to have a lot of us in your life. And we, being teachers for 20 years, we've seen a lot of parents that <clears throat> don't make great choices or make choices that I find don't benefit the kid. They don't benefit the kid. You know, yeah. and it's not about the parent, it's about the kid. All we hear at school from our administration, it's about the kid. We raise kids, it's about the kid. Mm -hmm. The parent takes it personally, and it's about your child. We want what's best for the child. So let's get into something that uh, we notice when it comes to parenting. Um, this is uh, it is something that I, I just I don't I don't understand uh, the parents that have their kids overbooked with after school activities. That's you know I've got par I've had parents who have had their kids on three baseball teams like yeah. soccer and like like three soccer teams or three baseball teams and I get like excuses like my son had three baseball you know events this week and he couldn't do his homework and I'm like dude I don't give homework you're talking to the wrong teacher you yeah. might want to know that first of all and second of all why would you put him on so many basketball or baseball or soccer teams like what's the goal there yeah. do you really think it's going to be pro I mean maybe he is I don't know but the reality is most kids are 
not, and they just need a good education to be home with you, eating dinner with you, and going to school and having a good day. Like, that makes a healthy kid, not three baseball teams. Yeah, I've had a student who was like in dance and she would miss mm-hmm. school because of dance Every Friday, every Friday. But then out. it, it yeah. got to the point that it wasn't yeah. just Friday. Yeah. It would be like a whole week if yep. they had some kind of out of state. Practice, of course, of course. Yeah, and then you her know. work suffered and her of grades course. suffered and then that so, stress was, was piled on the kid. Right. And right. then when the kid would get bad grades, the parent would be upset at the kid. Right. But the kid was in dance. So let's talk about that for a minute, the yeah. bad grades thing. Because yeah. we, I, I really struggle with that. Like I get parents calling me that they're angry that their kids have D's and F's. And I'm like, oh, wait a second. Accountability. Wait a second. That's accountability. An account- that's yes. accountability. Yeah. So let's talk about this as, as you know, like, yeah. like I said, if you're listening to this, it's because you're interested. Mm. So let's take off the I'm angry factor and let's talk about it. Your child has grades. If you're in the Broward County system, you should know your child's grades every day. Yeah, go to Pinnacle. Can, Pinnacle is 24-7. There should be no surprises. It can send an update to your phone. I can't tell you how many meetings I have. I didn't know. What do you mean you didn't know? Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm going to be professional, but this. my Jersey girl is going to come how out. You're going to you know, know it. your kids' grades? Right. It could, you know, I have my kids' grades sent to my phone twice a week. Yeah. My kids checked it every day. In class, my kids checked their grades. And in a, then I'm in a parent meeting, and the parent goes, I don't know how to check their grades. I'm like, are you fucking stupid? Like, really? Yeah. We're in yeah. pinnacle every day. You don't know how to check the kids' grades? Uh-huh. Like, where have you been? Exactly. Like, you should know your kids' grades. Maybe not every day. Like, maybe Tuesday, Thursday. Have them sent to you. It's very easy. The kid can set it up. It's screenshot. your job as a parent. Exactly. It's I have your my daughter. Job as a I have my daughter take screenshots. Yes. When I can't yes, access it course. for whatever reason. Of course. I'm just like, okay, you want to go to such and such activity or do right. such and such. What are your grades? Send me a screenshot of your grades right Right. now. So the thing is, you know, if you're a parent and you're not happy with their grades, it's not about, oh, the teacher hates him. Yeah. You know what? Let me tell you a secret as a teacher. We really don't give that much energy to liking or hating your child. We go in, we do magnificent work as teachers or good work as teachers, and we don't give that emotional, like, connection to each kid about I like you or I hate you. Yeah. There's just not, I mean, I care about my kids, but your kids, not so much. There's not enough time. I have them for 55 minutes. Yeah. And you know what? They get upset when they get a bad grade because they didn't do the work, because they didn't listen, because they didn't look at the deadline. It's about accountability and responsibility. And that comes from you, parents. And I hate to say it, but usually it's the mama. Yeah. Usually it's the mama checking the grades, doing the homework, you know, things like that. And I, you know, I've been in parent meetings and they're like, well, I don't have time. And again, back to when you look at the pregnancy test and you it says pregnant and you commit with it, like you're in. You cannot say, I don't have time. Your time is now the yeah, kid. I don't it's know, not no. about your time anymore. It's about the child. And there's something I just want yeah. to interject when we're talking about accountability. Sorry, I, give, I, have a lot that, to say I love that. There's <laughs> something I don't understand because since I became a single parent and my child had just turned one or was about to turn one, um, I've never understood the phrase, I don't have time oh. for your kid because right. I'm a single mom that has, that has worked multiple jobs. Right. Most of us do. Yeah. So... Um, there's always a way to find time. You can create mm-hmm. the time. And that's why maybe, maybe the extracurricular stuff needs to be taken off the agenda. Like the academics should really be, I believe, the most important of the form, the first formation years of your kid. And the first formation years don't end at age seven. I believe that that goes all the way up to age 17. Yeah. Like they need to have up to age 17 the time to develop themselves academically. If, if you want a kid that gets A's, and that does good in school. A's and B's. You know, and I don't you want to hear about overbook a book them. Right. You can't. You have to just be able to sit with them and read them. What did you do in science? What did you yeah. and this is a daily thing. I always tell my parents at open house. When you get the kid in the car or you're sitting at dinner, six sentences. If you have six classes in middle school, yeah. give me one sentence about each class. Per class. That's it. Six to 12 sentences. Yeah. And like, that's that's how you connect with them. And I have to tell you, Carla, and this is hard for my mamas to hear and my dads to hear, but oh, no. we're going to keep gonna it gonna real. Say. I cannot tell you how many students have told me, you know, Ms. Lopez, I try to talk to my mom or dad, but they're on their phone. Yeah. And I'm like, well, wait, honey, maybe they're working. Because, you know, like, I'm trying to, like, you know, benefit you guys. Yeah. And they're like, no, Ms. Lopez, I could see her scrolling. I could see him playing his game. 
and I'm just like, oh, my heart hurts because they want to connect with you. And like, I get it. I love my phone, but not more than my kid. No. So like I have seen kids and they've come to me and said to me, and I journal in my class. They say, I tried to talk to my mom last night because I'm struggling, but she was on her phone. She said she'd get back to me and she never has. Mm. Now, mamas and dads, I'm not blaming you. I'm just telling you what kids write about and tell me in class. Now, I was I trying to benefit the, the mamas. Thing. But I hear it a lot, and that's not an option. I've heard the same thing. I've had yeah. kids come to me that have issues, and, yeah. and, and their parent will ground them or right. punish them for something. And the kid's telling me, I never even got a chance to explain to them mm -hmm. what happened. Right. Or they just immediately just, uh, you know, assume that I was the guilty party or that it was all me. Um, and I wasn't given a chance to, like, explain um, because they just want to be done with, you know, the conversation. Right. They want to go back to their stuff. and Exactly. It goes back to, like, when you have a child, you need that, that is time. That is the important thing. Everything else is secondary. Yeah. And even though we work and make money and we take care of our kids, their emotional mental health is your primary focus, yeah. whether you like it or not. And part of the academics is that because if they're not getting good grades and I don't, you know, regardless of what their accommodations are, if they're not getting good grades, they feel bad about themselves. And I know yeah. that this podcast is about like, you know, mental health and feeling good. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, when a kid's getting a D or an F, they feel terrible. They feel terrible mm -hmm. in class. They feel terrible at home. It's like a loser sign is on their forehead. Like they know that. And part of my goal is to erase that. Mm -hmm. But if they're being told that at home, home and the mom's like I'm too busy to look at your work I'm too busy to check your grades mm. the dad's like I can't do it I'm going away for the weekend like like again parents we're not criticizing you we are telling you what kids tell us my parents are too mm. busy to pay attention to me exactly I hear it all the time exactly and I'm like I really try to defend parents like I know how busy we are but the reality is when you have a kid it's not about you anymore it's would about you, your kid would you say that that's the phrase we've heard the most in oh, 20 my years goodness. of my teaching. parents don't have my time. parents are too busy my, my parents, mom is yeah. too busy mm -hmm. or yep. I'll have the kid that tells me that my mom I'm, I'm I needs me to do this and this and that for like her business like the mom has as a business yeah and uses the kid as like her yeah. little assistant yeah. to do things and I then the kid it, struggles in school it. right because they it. come to school to socialize and not to do their work because they don't get to do any socializing outside because they work they literally are underage working as a little assistant yeah. to and, their parents and in like a family business right i know i know i do there's a lot of like families so when that does the kid do, when does the right. kid study or get their homework done right. so you can't get mad at them because, i don't you know yeah i was working with my mom last night i couldn't do it i'm like okay but yeah. that's that's different than We've like i went to two sporting that. events oh, you know wow. i was at the football game last night i didn't have time to do my homework so the bottom line is you know for me it's like i just want to tell the parents like look in the future where do you want your child to go how do you want your child to be mm -hmm. how do you want your child's standard of life to be and yeah. like it starts with if that's where you want them to be successful college technical school what is your goal for when they graduate and become adults yeah like you got to plan it like what's the business plan there yeah. i want them here well you know what it starts here elementary middle school high school there are steps you have to take and look at you have to have a game plan just like we have a game plan yeah. for our lives you have to have a game plan so have a business plan for your kids and it doesn't have to be you know for some people they, they will, they'll get overwhelmed they think it has to be intricate it's no. not really intricate it's small no. things you're doing as you're right. raising them right that is making the, those adjustments so that they can get the successful grades right. they need to get to the next step. Like there's no child who should have a C or below. Yeah. Like teachers, like we have been around enough to know. Yeah. We give so many assignments, and every so child many opportunities. and opportunities, and we give such grace. Mm -hmm. You know, we look the other way for our missed assignment. We should have no child with C's, D's, and F's. And no parent should ever say, I don't know their grades or I can't <coughs> help them. That's not an option. Saying I can't to your, for your child, it's not an option. It's not an option. You uh, know? And then, the, uh, uh, so Here goes the light again. <laughs> accountability. Yeah. No, that lighting is, oh, that light is yeah. brighter. It is. It is. It is so, it's it's like, so, it's like something is pressing the button. That only happens. Don't say that. It's creepy. Oh. Anyway, talk about responsibility. You know, accountability you, and responsibility them. comes from you, so mom comes, and dad. It comes from the parent. It yeah. doesn't come from the kid. Right. Um. I, I, I get very broken hearted when in meetings I see the parent like veer the finger toward to the kids specifically. No, it's towards us. When usually. it's like sixth grade, it's all about you guys. Yeah. And, and, and I'm like, honey, I only have your child for 55 minutes. The but rest I would is on say, you. I would you know? say in seventh, in eighth, ninth, tenth, and even to the yeah. end of high school, I would say it's still the parent. It's always the parent, even in college. But like you they know? really, you know, sixth grade, like the parent conferences that I've had over the past couple of years, the parents are angry because we're not doing more for their child 
And I just want to say. The parents want us to yeah, parent exactly, for them. Exactly. Let's talk about that's, that. That's the most. After so accountability, like, let's go into parents you know, wanting teachers to parent for them. And like I said, if you're not happy with what we're talking about, you feel like we're not real. Turn them on, like we're not really uh, click you know it off. click or it no, off, man. You know what? Or watch and comment. Yeah. Please comment. Yeah, I want to know your I can't tell I have good or bad. Times. I don't care. Well, well, that's your problem, Miss Lopez. He's in your class. Yes. I'm like, sweetheart, I'll take care of him for 55 minutes, but then I release him to you. You've got to yeah. raise him. And then they were like, I can't control him at home. I'm like, dude, he's 11. You should yeah. be able to control him everywhere. You know what I mean? And that's an issue, too. They want to be their friend. Like, your parent is not your friend. You can't be friends with your kids. I mean, you can be friends, and of course you want them to like you. I would, but you I cannot would call be afraid. It, I would call it, it's conditional friendship. Yes. It's a conditional yes. Yes. friendship where, you know, mm -hmm. there's 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 a line of, of friendship, and there's a line of I'm your parent. Men mentor and parent. Right. Exactly. You know? Yep. And you have to let them know that. I right. mean, uh, as a single parent, I could I could yep. tell you right. that I would have to like tell my daughter, okay, now you know, mommy's talking to you as a friend, and now mommy's gonna talk. I'm talking to you as a parent and a mentor. I have to guide you in the right direction. Sometimes you need to remind kids of that. Just like when you're using your phone and you're on a specific app, some of the settings for different apps are like they're not the same. You you have to adjust the settings. And right. you have to let the, the the app know that so it knows how to interact with your phone, right? right? Same with your child, with your relationships with right. your with your children. Right. You have to be able, you have to tell them, okay, as a mentor, as a parent, this is what you need to do. This is what needs to happen. This is the expectation, because I want you to do better. I want you to succeed. You have to basically take the route of helping your kid with their self love. Right. That requires time. Mm -hmm. I'm so sorry. I, mm -hmm. I, I time. think time is the biggest. There's nothing to be sorry for. The reality factor. is time. I don't care if it's time in the car, time over dinner, time in the morning, time at wherever you can find Make your time. drive home longer and yeah. go through a, a Starbucks. It's, it's time. It's time. Just to have a, extra time to yeah. have a conversation with them. Yeah. Um, they should all have good grades, A's and B's. I don't care what accommodations. This new, everybody's got a 504. Yeah. You know what I want to know? I want to know who's paying what doctor to get all these 504s. Something about additional time makes you feel like they're going to do better. No. Let me tell you something. You give a good more time, he takes more time, still doesn't do the work. Or they're going to so play around. So Mr. 504 or Dr. 504 that we're getting lately, like that's the flavor of the year, of this year. Every year it's something oh. different. This year it's like, my kid needs a 504. A 504. Great. Give him more time. <laughs> You know what? It's like an adult. You give us more time to do something. Do we get it done? Generally, yeah. we just postpone it. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. that's the human nature. Yeah. So it's just, you got to give the kid the time. You don't have to do their homework. You just have to say, what is your homework? Where are your grades? Show me your grades. And if you're not happy with the grades, you have to do something drastic. Yeah. Like, you know, the most loving thing you could do for your kid is discipline them. You know, and everybody does it differently. But mm -hmm. if they're, you're not happy with their behavior, you're not happy with their academics, like there's consequences. You have to correct Don't send them, them to their room. They've got everything in their room. Yeah. You sit over there in the corner with a book all day until your work is done, and then we'll talk. Mm -hmm. That's it. You don't get to go to your friends. There's no sports. There's nothing. You sit there and do all the work you missed, even if you don't get it great. Like, they need something that hurts. And parents are afraid of hurting their kid. My kid's not going to like me. So the fuck what? <laughs> you know what? My chairs are good. They're not like, supposed so, to exactly. like you. Exactly. So the fuck what? Your kid doesn't like you for the day. Guess what? He's stuck with you. He's not going anywhere. And you're going to help him see that life has boundaries. I'm going to share a story of a student who had that issue. Like they wanted to retaliate against the parent that was correcting them. Mm. And they thought that it would, you know, that they would have a better life somewhere else. They actually called, um, mm, they no. called. Did they call? They called Child oh, Protective Services oh on their parents. Oh, my god! This was, this was like 10, 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, and he was taken from the house. Wow. Um, and wow. I, Because I, I remember as a teacher in the classroom, there was just some odd things I noticed about the kids. Right. And then he shared the story with me. And then we had, a, obviously, a conference. And then the parents said, you know, wow. she, she had, you know, used some... Um, uh, what's the word? You know when you want to... Tough love. Tough love, yeah. Uh, but it was not out out of bounds. It it was warranted, mm -hmm. and um, he didn't like it. The boy didn't like it, so he basically called DC out. Oh DCF my gosh. On his parents, he was taken to a foster care home. Yep. You know they do the whole process with him. Yep. Um. Two days later, he's calling, begging the mom to 
to take him home of course. and apologizing. Of course. Um, and Cause he it's was, real out he there. was a misbehaved kid mm-hmm. and he was struggling with grades mm-hmm. and his mom was trying to correct him and put him in the right path. And, right. and one thing the mom said is like, I don't, I don't care if he likes me or not. Right. I want him to be uh, to be a better person. To be a good better. man. To be a good yeah. person. Right. Yeah. And, and you know what? You teach a kid responsibility, accountability, consequences. Not everybody's gonna like you. Not everybody's gonna be not every day is gonna be a happy day. Some yeah. days you're gonna struggle. You know what I mean? And you teach them consequences. You know what happens? They grow up to be respectable, hardworking, good people who know that life is about consequences and actions. You know, you can't do whatever you want to do as an adult because the popo will pick you up real quick. <laughs> you know, like you got to teach him that now. But really? I have parents. I don't want him to I not like me. me. Fucking who cares if he likes you or not? I You're the parents. He likes. You know what I mean? I have, you know, I have um, subs because I've been, you know, doing this. Substitutes. Until, substitutes. Yeah. And, um, you know, they always go crazy. And like when I call, mm. I'm like, your kid was on the floor rolling around. Mm. And the mom's like, oh, my child. I'm like, dude, oh, you, okay. come on, so- man. You, you know, how could you believe? a sub over my child i'm like because that's the adult and your kid's an idiot in class generally so yeah i do believe the sub sub you know what i mean but the parent doesn't want to hear it and michelle obama i love her book because it talks about (laughs) parent the child you have yes if you know you have an overactive hyper child then there's got to be consequences to this you don't say my child would never do that if the teacher's taking the time to call like, if I'm taking my yeah. time to call, it's because I need your help. Yeah. I'm not calling to criticize you. I'm not calling to, like, yell at you. I mean, I want to in my head because I'm like, what, are you fucking stupid believing him? Why is but whatever. Happening? I'm like, I need your help. Your kid's rolling on the floor in class. Mm-hmm. I need your help. Not your denial. Not your anger. I need your help. You know yeah. what I mean? A teacher never will take time to call a parent on behavior or email a parent on behavior for something that, for something that is minor. Right. You know? I mean... You could say that some teachers might do like might. some teachers might do the that. Newer they might teachers, be the younger teachers. They might be exaggerative. Right. Okay, but I don't know about that. if you're getting it several times, the law mm. of probability basically is telling you that it's probably happening, happening. and it's true. At least be open to it. If yeah. you got three te- you know, if it looks like a duck and it quacks like a duck, guess what? It's probably a fucking duck. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you have to be open that your child is different out in the world. And you know, they are as, at home. yeah, I raise my kids and I would always tell the teachers, tell me who they are in class mm-hmm. because who I see at home is this, who yeah. are they in class? Mm-hmm. Cause some kids are very different out in the world. You know, like at home, at home, my daughter is very, um, like she, she stands up for herself and likes to tell me, you know, what, what is and is not okay with her. Mm-hmm. So, you know, um, when you're, when you're raising a highly cognitive mm-hmm. child, you right. have to kind of, um, emotionally aware yeah in tune to their boundaries you have you have to kind of like find a way to temper through that right right uh but Mm. in class she's super respectful and does everything the teacher wants and it you know uh if she's put in her place she has no problem which is a night and day for me oh my goodness it's a night and day for me with my kid so um you know we've talked about accountability We've talked about um, understanding that you, you know your your child uh, might be at fault uh, at times. Um, we're talking about you know parents needing to have responsibility uh, towards their kid, um, but That's... making the time. We're talking about also mm-hmm. making the time. Time is the biggest factor mm-hmm. that can change everything. Uh, yeah. If you want your kid to be a better individual, person. a better, better student, person, a better at that person. at their age that yeah. they're in right now. Mm-hmm. Whether it's elementary, middle, or high school, you want your kid to be better, give them quality time. And and talk about respect. Like, I have so many kids where, like, I'm like, honey, sit down. And they're like, what? Me? No, I vote me. And I'm like, like, honey, do you do that at home? Yeah. They're like, yeah. And I'm like, okay, well, that's not going to happen in my class. (gasps) You're so mean. (gasps) And they just, and they keep going. And I'm like, okay, that's going to stop. Or, like, they'll do something horrible. Yeah. And you you just say, please stop. Stop. And their response is like, I didn't do Do anything. Yeah. My often answer is, like, I don't care if you did or you didn't. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm just saying, please stop and sit down. Yeah, that's it. Like, you just try to shut it down because you're 
want to teach them. Making it into a snowball. Right. But they want that attention. They're craving yeah. it. So the hands go, and they're trying to get the last word in. And let me tell you, parents, mm -hmm. when a kid tries to get the last word in, mm -hmm. it's extreme disrespect. Mm -hmm. And teachers hate it. Let mm -hmm. me be repeat. Let me repeat that and be clear. When your kid tries to get the last word in, maybe that's cute at home. Maybe that's funny at home. But out in the world, people think your kid's a jerk. Oh, so you know what I mean? Yeah, let's He's trying to get the last that. word in. He's trying to say the last thing. Ms. Loop, I'm like, dude, you know what? I asked you to sit down. This is not a Just conversation. Sit Just sit down and don't say anything. So let's talk about, I love how my dog's in the back. I know. He's like, yeah, 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 you tell him. You He's tell him. Third guest. He's I just can't that. stand with the kid. It just shows extreme disrespect. Like, and I tell them, you know what? In case you didn't learn this at home, manners go. Here's how it works with manners. Mm. When a teacher tells you to do something, even if you don't agree, you just do it. And if you want to talk about it later, we can but manners, you know, the, the the etiquette for classroom behavior is if I tell you to do something, you do it the first time quietly. Mm -hmm. There's no response, nothing. So here is what needs to be emphasized. Parents, you need the quality time so that you can use that quality time to parent your kid, to discipline your kid. Because those are the time. it's during quality time that you can teach your kid valuable character traits manners without being frustrated because they're right. not misbehaving when you're doing having quality time with them right they're enjoying the quality time they're feeling validated they're feeling like you're giving them value mm -hmm. so when you, you use those times to discuss why is it important to be a trustworthy individual right why is to integrity important you know? how to be respectful mm -hmm. that, you know that respect is a choice you can't right. just you can't just you know um, respect one person one way and another person like right. treat them like crap, especially with authority figures. Right. You know, we live in a system where if you're going to be like that in the real world, yeah. you're going to then deal with a kid that you're going to have to be taking out of jail at night because they chose to do stuff or to, or even talk to authority in a way that they right. shouldn't have. Right. I'm like, you can't do this. And the yeah. like, I, I tell the parents this and I'm like, you know what? I worry about this because he's got to get the last word. And it's mm -hmm. so rude. And the parents like, well, it just exhausts me. So I just let him. I'm like, you need to stop that. Yeah. You, you know, you need to stop him from thinking he's an adult getting the last word in. Because sometimes I don't know about you, but in sixth grade, they think you're they're you're, they're my peer, and they I'm like, try to let, be your yeah, equal. let me be very clear. Like you're eleven, yeah. I'm the adult. You have no say when I tell you to do something. Yeah, that's how the world really works. They're a child, but for some reason, they're treated like an equal at home, perhaps. Yeah, especially with like certain parents, maybe with they're single not. parents, that they're could not. Be, that could happen. Right. Um, right, but they're they need to learn their place. Like you're a child, you're a young person, you deserve respect for sure. Yeah, yeah. but in class, the teacher has the last word. The adult has the last word. Just like the police would have the last word. Yeah. Just like the judge will have the last oh, word. God. Right, like yes. teach them that now. You, don't you shut up that. when an adult tells you to do something. You shut up and you do it. Mm -hmm. You can talk about it later. You can bring it home to the parents. Yeah. Right? We'll talk about it, but during class, there's just no time to, this is, I always tell them, we're not negotiating. You're doing what I ask you the, to do. The child makes the situation worse. Yes, I think the that's escalation what, what factor. Happens. Right. And another thing that also takes place is um, the child basically gets redlined right. when it comes to who they are in that classroom. And the teacher is less likely to be understanding with that kid because... There, it's 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 problematic. What do you say, red line? What do you mean? Red line. Give like, me red line. Every time I'll get an assignment from that kid, yeah, and something's off yep. or something's missing, or they need extra time or whatever. Red line means I'll look at the kid and I'm like, you know what? I already gave you extra time. You didn't do it. it I'm sorry. It's a zero. I, mm -hmm. I don't want to work with that. I don't want to. I don't want to create opportunities for that kid. That's what I'm saying. I don't want to create opportunities for that kid. Why? Because he gives me such a hard time in class. Yeah, it's difficult because I think the fact is, like, the, the kids and the parents forget that, like, we are people. Yeah. You know, like, we're teachers, we're women. You're raising my you blood know, pressure. You're, yeah, you're pe we're people. When a kid is mean to me, it hurts me. Mm -hmm. When the, I've gotten emails from parents where the first line is, I never liked you. Oh, and I'm God. like, dude. You know, you want to email me that and I had your kid all day? Like, that's your job as a parent. If you don't like me, get him out of my class. Exactly. That's your job. Advocate for your exactly. child. Anyway, the point is, when a child is disrespectful or mean, it's kind of hard to keep giving to him. Yeah. Not that we won't give him the basics of what he needs. Yeah, we, we will, do the basics. But, like, but... think about it. When somebody's mean to you or nasty to you, how open and willing are you to give them extra? 
Yeah, it's just it's just human nature to kind of just you know um, run away from that, or just kind of keep your distance. Keep your distance. You don't want to get involved with that. I don't want my. You know, there's a reason why we look as great as we do right now, (laughs) even though we've worked in the system for 20 years. I'm not going to let that raise my blood pressure. It's not my kid. Yeah, I didn't have them. And sometimes I have to remind my students of that. You're not my child. Mm. I didn't birth you. I'm not here to negotiate with you. You do as I say. And often when I find, this is something else I find, that when I'm giving a kid an instruction or a direction, they take it as a suggestion. Yeah, this is not, I have to this is not an option. <laughs> this is not a, it's not a suggestion, yeah. Yeah. take your seat. It's yeah. a direction. It's an order. It's, right. it's part of the school Right. Uh, it's part of the policy rules. Ex- expectations. expectations. You signed off on the code of conduct. I can almost <laughs> promise you that every parent, including myself, I cannot tell you all the code of conduct no. rules, but I know the basics. Yeah. You know, I know the basics. And, you know, there's a situation where, like, <laughs> you know, like, mm. we, you know, the school has got this page, a social media page, mm. and the parent told you know the parent oh, God. posted i'm gonna have my child videotape the teachers that like, is illegal they posted that do they you know, know that that is illegal we know, can sue them for this the bottom line is you're telling your child to do something that eight adults are telling them not to do and you're telling your child to do something that's unlawful it's it's your break you're telling the child here's what worries me the most you're right. telling the child you know, it's you're the parent, right? And they right. love you, and they would die for you, your kids, yeah. right? They would die, no matter so, how good or bad right, the parent right, you are, right? They, they would really, die for you. They really have so a soft spot. They go to parent. school. They're eight hours, mm. and they hear it from the administrator. The first opening, hello, don't take your phones out. Then they hear it from the other administrator at lunch. Don't then they take hear your it from phone six out. teachers, don't take your phones out. And then the parent, the child is thinking, I gotta take my phone out. I gotta do what my parent my tells me to do. My mom wants a recording, right? Of I gotta of, get a recording of this. I just feel like. Like, first of all, you know, there's, Wait, maybe, there's she, so much maybe she has to copy your style. First of all, <laughs> you know, I, I really feel like I sense like that's emotional abuse. Yes. You know, like I, I want to question the parent. Why would you do that? Why are you telling your child to break the rules? What else are you telling them to do that breaks the rules? Oh, I know what else they're telling you. You know what I do. mean? Like, I know what else I'm going to do. It just worries me. Call me. Call me at the end of class or call me. Uh, I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> While you're in third period or yeah, what have I you. Know. I don't know. Because, like, you know what I'm thinking about? Like, I was running this by, like, my son. He's like, Mom, can you imagine the pressure that child has thinking, you know, like, I want to listen to my mom because I love my, you know, my mom or dad. Mm. But, like, my teachers are telling me not to do it. Can you imagine the stress and the mental, the mental fear, the mental stress this child must have? Can you imagine that child thinking, what am I going to do? listen to eight adults that yeah. I have to be with all day and maybe get consequences like suspension or detention? Or do I listen to my parents? That's why I call it emotional abuse. Yeah. You're telling your child to do something that's breaking the rules. Yeah. You know what I mean? And by the way, they deleted the post. And as a Jersey girl, my thing is, if you're ballsy enough to post it, be ballsy enough to own it and not delete it. I'm just saying, girl, if you're oh. going to put it out there or guy, put it out there. Don't, you know, when you get called on it, go, don't go back and delete it. To me, that is so non-Jersey. Thank you. Oh, it's like you know what I mean? Too. Like, if you're going to own it, own it. You know what I mean? The yes. Point, the they point delete the post. They delete the post. They delete the post because right. they know they got caught with their right. tail between their legs. It's just the, you're telling the child to break. Like, I want the police involved. You mm-hmm. know, like, go check on this parent. What else are they telling this child to do that's incorrect? I don't think that they realize it's unlawful to videotape or record anyone in any state of the United States without their permission. Right. I just feel like it's, it's so. It's what were so they going to use it for? To post it on that Facebook as evidence? Right. Like, and they look, right. I'm right. And then maybe she, the, the mom or dad will get more likes. Like, they're looking um, for more likes. Like, do you need that? Really? Because, oh, like, man. you know what? Like, I have a YouTube page about my parents. Like, I talk to them all the time. Yeah. Like, go well, go watch my YouTube page. Mm-hmm. You know, like, I used to video them. Here's what we're doing today. If that's what you want, man, go there. But yeah. don't tell the child to break the rules because it's, talk about a mental, emotional angst. I you know, would be and they're so, so freaked out if my parents. Oh my goodness! For that. I know. Can you imagine what the? You know, I'm thinking, what is the kid going through mentally, emotionally? And you know how sensitive they are, and you know how yeah. like dramatic they get, and you know that they make really bad calls when they're under emotional pressure like yeah. that. Yeah, you know what I mean. And the mom is like teeing it up. Go do this. Break the rules for me. And it's just, or the dad's doing that. I'm just like. 
that poor kid must be like under such emotional pressure. I just feel like it's an emotional abuse thing. Yeah, it kind know? of it kind of is. Right. As a parent, you should be teaching them the value of of following rules. Right. And also how to use their devices. Let's talk about parenting and electronic devices since you brought up the parent wanting the kid to record right. <laughs> record the footage of the teacher in the classroom. Which, you know... Um, Why? We're boring. We teach. La, 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 la. You yeah. Know? It's... Uh, I don't know... Uh, whatever. Unless they want to know our style you know, or whatever. Exactly. But, like, the rule... <laughs> you know, the rules are... Like, other schools, they take the phones away yeah. now. You know what I mean? And Our the, school does also. The, the, the thing is, you take the phone away and the parent has to pick no, it up. No, no. No, no, they take the school, they take the phone away in the beginning of the day. They put them in lockers. Oh, okay. The kids okay. have to put them in lockers. The, the teachers lock them up or the administration locks them up. They're like clear cases. Mm -hmm. Like back in the old day, like, you know, the Best Buys, you just kind of. Yeah. So they put the phone away. Tell you, the I kids get a little that. ID. Yeah, they have no phone. I would love You know, that. in our school, they get to play with the phone at lunch. And that's a privilege. But we yeah. don't have to have that. We don't have you to know? have that. I would definitely I just, love if the kid comes into yeah. school, you have to put your phone in the locker. Yeah, like that's it. For, I think it would be a lot less stress for them. You yeah, it would. I mean? They don't know how to use. It's like you know the the, the electronic devices have is like a drug, mm -hmm. you know, a gateway. Uh, they call it. <laughs> it is a gateway drug. You're basically allowing your kid to handle something that's kind of like a substance for their brain. Yeah, it's giving them large amounts of dopamine because they're excited about everything that they're seeing. You right. know, on different apps, on right. TikTok or whatever. And when I'm recog real, when I'm looking at this, my my question to myself is like, how does a parent allow them to have an account if they're First of all, they're under the age of sixteen, right? And and these apps are for kids that are older. Yeah. So why are parents complaining about specific things that are posted or or done or what the teacher might or might not share? That's another, right. another issue. Mm -hmm. When it's like, my question is, how are you allowing your kids to use the social media app to begin with on their phone? They're not yeah. supposed to use it. Yeah, there's just a lot of questions. And it you goes know? back to like, Parenting. you are the parent, you know, you are responsible for the child. You are help. you know, you have to guide them with accountability, yeah. responsibility, not breaking the rules. Don't tell them to break the rules. You know yeah, what I don't mean? Don't tell them like, to break the rules. You tell, no. you know, try breaking the rules out in the real world as an adult. See what happens. It's you know not, what I mean? It's not a good, you just, it's not a good image. It's a bad image. And I'm worried about the kid. Their mental health is so fragile. And by telling them to do the wrong thing, it's like, what are you asking them to do? Would you, you know, say, they're so sensitive, the kids, like, you know, the anxiety level they have. Like, I have so many kids that have anxiety. And I'm, you know, when we were young, we didn't have that. Yeah, it was just called life. Anxiety. Like, you have to just learn to handle life. Like, my dad is a psychiatrist. Mm -hmm. He would call it making your toolbox. You're feeling this. What can you do to help yourself? That's cool. You're feeling that. What can you do to help yourself? What action can you take if you're afraid of the test? Yeah. Instead of being anxious, how about we study together? Mm -hmm. That's a tool. You know, like you have a toolbox, you fill up the toolbox. Yeah. I like that analogy. Yeah. It's, it's helpful. It is. It is. Instead um, of just being stuck in the anxiety, what action can you take? Well, here's the next question. Do you think that parenting, like ha taking quality time to parent your kid, do you think that that would help lessen anxiety? Oh, my goodness. A thousand percent. Yeah. You know, because they have such... Things happen at school, like middle schoolers are like living high schoolers. Like when we were in high school, mm -hmm. the drama we had with the boyfriends mm -hmm. and the drugs and this it's and that. It's now gone down Not to in the school, school, but it, I'm sorry, this microphone. Oh, it on. is. I'll adjust it. That's okay. It, it's no, like no, the drama be, is it. in middle school. So like if you take the time to be with your child, hey, what is happening here? That their anxiety will be a little bit alleviated because they've got somebody to talk to. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I believe um, it does help a lot. Sometimes just with having a conversation with a student, yeah, um, they'll go to a next class, take a test. They'll come back and they're like, oh my God, after the conversation I had with you, I got a 90 on the test. Right. I feel so much better. Right. I right. got it. I never got a 90 on the, mm -hmm. on the, on the, on the civics. Like just the connection, just taking the time. What's I felt on? calmer. Yeah. 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 Um, and it's because I mentalized the kid. Don't look at it as a test. Just look at it as another activity mm -hmm. that you're going to do. Yep. Another assignment. It's your job as a parent to calm them down. Teach them stra right. to teach them strategies right. that Tools. can calm them down. Right. And you may say as a parent, well, how can I teach them? Because when I was a kid, I struggled. No one helped me. Go back to that era of your life in mm -hmm. your mind and ask yourself, how would I have wanted an adult mm -hmm. to help me at that point? Right. You're going to have the answer for that. Right. Here's what would have helped me. You're going to and the answer you get, that's what you apply with your own child. Right in the quality time you give your child and quality time sometimes could just 
in all honesty, with what happens in, in everyday life with kids in school and work, just time. it might just be 10 minutes a day. They just need time. It might just be mm-hmm. 10 minutes mm-hmm. a day, like after school or when you pick them up and you come home. Mm-hmm. Um, just drop everything else, cuddle right. with them. And you're not on the cuddle phone. Cuddle with them somewhere. You're not watching TV. You're not in, you know, like you're talking to them. Like, look at them. Yeah. You know, like I think it was Maya Angelou. She was like, look at your child. You know, let them know you love them and you see them. Yeah. Because I feel like in my classroom, when I walk in my door, like I say hello and I see them. Yeah. I see who's got wet hair. They love that. I, I know when you say, oh, nice shoes or hey, baby, nice shirt. You know, they're like they beam that you saw them. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh, they want us some extra attention and love. They do love they that. They just do. They love when you just, I just look at them and I see them. I'm like, and hey, I great smile. fit. Yeah. Like great I love hair. Look at, those, look at those kicks, man. Look you at know? That. And they like beam with happiness because you saw them. Those and then crocs. they behave, right? <laughs> <laughs> and then it's funny because those are the kids that don't behave, that don't, <laughs> don't have issues behaving. I'm cracks right now. Just the time, Ooh. the time. And the, it's just, parenting is hard. Let me be very clear. It's, yeah, it's parenting very hard. Is really, really and there's hard. A, you know, the world has always been hard. Hard. If you go back to the 1930s magazines, mm. people were saying a good house, you know, there's an article in 1930s, the good housekeeping article was for women, how life was so busy. Mm-hmm. Like, it's really funny because it's always been like that. Now it's just social media. You know what I mean? Yeah. But like life has always been hard. I don't really. think it's ever not been busy. Right. But like you have to parent. Look at all the people that have successful, wonderful children and ask them, what are you doing? How are you doing it? There's no shame in that. No. You know, there's no shame in like, you want to be good what at What is something. their formula? Right. What are you doing? My kid's going through this. What would you suggest? Excuse me, suggest. Yeah. Yeah. You know? I mean, I've, I, I, I've, I've done that. I, I, in real time, I'm still doing that. I, I don't mm-hmm. think you can go through life not asking other people questions. Right. Um, and trying to pretend like everything's fine on your boat. It's okay to, you know, scream towards another boat that's also navigating the water and being like, hey, what are you doing for your sails to work better with the wind right? and get, you know, get right. a feedback that might help you. Um, so an, a, a parenting uh, with quality time can definitely help lessen a child's anxiety. But the mental health, mm. you know, the mental, the and self-esteem. And do you know that an anxiety, mm-hmm. anxiety level is directly linked with suicidal thoughts, it suicidal is. ideation. It is. Uh, most of the suicidal ideation that happens with young teens is directly linked to the fact that exactly. they, they don't, know how to handle their anxiety right. the they emotions. want to escape the anxiety mm-hmm. and they believe that suicide is a way to make it stop right and like the parents don't even know what they're feeling or thinking because there's no they time don't know. talking and this talk. is where this is where the spiritual warfare that yep. i talk about in other episodes and mm-hmm. I, I put a little bit in every every episode mm-hmm. comes into play as a parent you have to be very well aware that there are there is energy fields on our planet that regardless of whatever religion you may be they are constantly affecting every human being to think towards the negative, to destroy their life, to end their life. And when it comes to your kids and they're out in the world, they are being, um, um, I don't want to say uh, haunted, uh, but I want to say uh, these energy fields are attaching themselves to your kid. And they're making your kid believe that harming themselves is a way out, that um, well, ending their life read. is a way out. That's what they're reading about. Yeah. That's on social media. This is like... So this, you need to talk to your right. kids so that they can see that you can make everything okay for them. Right. But making everything okay for them doesn't mean that you always take the route of they're always innocent. Right. Making everything okay for them is showing them how do you solve the problem of anxiety or fear. Yeah. Like, you know, when my kids were little, I'd be like, all right, let's soldier up in the car. Let's soldier up. Yeah. Put, your, put your gear on. Okay. You're smart. You're kind. You're loving. You're, you know, your mama loves you. Your dad mm-hmm. loves you. Like soldier up. And then, you know, like I felt like I was setting them into the world yeah. and I would be like, okay, they're ready. You know what I mean? They're as ready as can be. The soldiers, the warriors are ready to go because mm-hmm. there's forces out there. Like you said, there there's other kids, out there's there. other things. There's so many things things that you have no idea that your kids encounter at uh, like sixth, seventh, eighth grade. I mean, it's out there. It's happening. Mm-hmm. Whether you want to believe it or not, these forces, the, 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 the phone, you're giving them access to them. Yeah. And it's like, they have to be ready because if they're not ready, they will be winged by the ear to something that's detrimental and negative and perhaps, you know, very, very the dramatic. global The global statistics for um, su- suicide uh, mm. is uh, every 40 seconds, someone's, mm. Someone takes their life, and those are the ones Traumatic. that are reported right. that way. Right. There's several that are not reported because right. not all of them are reported, or right. not all of them 
are not all of them can be reported because some are happening in countries where people don't live with reporting yeah. those kind of things um, yeah. anyway. But it's every 40 seconds a person takes their life. Um, this is a pandemic. Um, I think it's one of the biggest pandemics we have right now because mm-hmm. people are actually believing it's a way out and, and right. it's a way out of anxiety. Right. It's a way out of depression. That's another yeah. thing that can develop in your kid um, yeah. from not being able to cope Talk um, to you, is, you know? is depression. They can't cope with what's going on at school. And then there's a lot of like, you know, the, the kids are mean. They're yeah. really mean to each other. I mean, oh, I'm sorry, my shoe. <laughs> my shoe, not, not my Crocs. <laughs> anyway, the kids, she has, she's have Crocs on the kids can be mean. But you know what? Adults can be mean. Cashiers mm-hmm. can be mean. Everybody can be mean. If you don't teach your child how to handle mean people or mean comments, they internalize it. I don't like how Becky in the office looks at me. It gives me anxiety. I know, right? I know. (laughs) It's like you've got to, like, again, the toolkit. Okay, so-and-so is not nice to me, so what are you going to do? You don't internalize it. You just kind of talk to me about it when you get home. Tell me, let's make yeah. a plan. Like, let's pretend what we're going to do to Becky. And you make them laugh about it. That's realize, another That's another you know? thing. You just brought up a good point, that making a plan, making teaching them, like, me- mental strategies right. of how to cope mm-hmm. and also take over the thoughts that are giving anxiety. Right. Because Look- sometimes you, can, you, you need to know how to take over thoughts of anxiety with other thoughts that are... Positive, More positive, upbeat, confident. You know, you can handle this. Yeah. You can do this. You'll get through this. You can't tell you, you know, back in the day, it was like, just ignore the bully. It doesn't no, work like that anymore no. because it escalates. Share you with your give kid. Them, right. Sh- share with your kid a moment that you witnessed mm-hmm. or experienced the and same here's thing how you did it, in right. your age, in, in right. that age. But don't tell them to do anything wrong. No yeah. breaking the rules. Don't tell them to break the rules. You know what I mean? Here's how some positive things you can cope. This is what you can do. Tell an adult in the room. Mm-hmm. Ask to get your seat changed. Tell the teacher what's happening. If you tell us, we can help you. Yeah. You know, we are aware of it. and We will make sure they stay away from each other. That's and, another thing right? I think Just parents... let need. us know. Par- this is another thing that I think is hilarious with parents. They will say they don't have time for their kid. They- I don't have time to look at their grades mm-hmm. once a week. I or hear that, whatever. Yeah. I don't have time to uh to be there at night for dinner whatever they have all these reasons but then they'll they'll have like a a couple of itemized things on a list about the things you should have time for for their kid in the classroom as if their kid is the only kid you have i know i know but you know what i (laughs) you know i always say like i'm a i'm a mom and i get it so i've been there you know like i get it but the realization is like you know, your kid is one of a group and they have to they have to get along with the group. And yes, your kid is special to you. Their little special snowflake is yours, mm. you know, but like in a class among others, they're one of the great kids. You Would know? you say that parents have to let go of entitlement? Yeah, that's entitlement's a big umbrella. I think entitlement is what lot. causes people to be like, right. you know, well, why I'm didn't so you? Special. Why didn't you do this for my? How did you do this for my daughter? Right, and, or my son? Because right. that's your job. <laughs> you know what I and mean? Like, no, that's that's your, that's your, your job. job as a parent. You know what I mean? If that, you know, that's you know, your kid doesn't get extra special treatment for any reason. There's something I found I find to be really lovely. I, I give uh, usually I give the, my first class of the day a lot of grace i'm getting the day started because i recognize it's not the kids fault that they're late it's the parent yeah it's the parents kids that that are late late. every day and you know Mm -hmm. what when your kids late every day some teachers just make a big deal and some yeah. teachers like I just let them in. I'm like, hey, baby, I'm glad you're I here. I give them a lot of grace. I do because they're not driving yet, but it causes yeah. them so much anxiety. Like sometimes they come in crying. Yeah. They're just like, I'm so sorry. I'm like, dude, it's okay. Just open up a computer. Let's go. But he is so embarrassed yeah. to come to the door late yeah. every day. He's like, I hate this and I can't do anything about it. I'm like, that's okay. In a couple of years, you're driving. You'll be on time. So but I like, you know, I feel like parents need to, uh, again, it's you, you're the you got to work. You got to work on that. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, being... we're all working on something. Just, you know, your kid teaching your kid to be on time. It's like a life skill. One Oh one. Yeah. Be polite be on time you know like try going to work late a couple times see what happens it's, you know yeah, <laughs> i mean like gonna, really if you don't show up for work two times by the time you get there the third time work. there's your box thank you so very the much shocker for me is the, the the parent will will struggle with time with that but they want the teacher to have incessant infinite amount of time to deal yeah. with the discipline issues that yeah. the parent isn't targeting at home it's you can't you know we're teachers you're the parent. I just keep saying it like, I have your child for 55 minutes. Yeah. And I will do everything I can for your child in those yeah. 55 minutes. 
But the bottom line is, like you said, I'm not the parent. Yeah. You know, like I will teach them language arts for 180 days and then they're gone. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then it's up to you, you know? And yeah, I just... because we also have, we have, we have our own expectations in our, in our department and in, mm -hmm. in whatever we're teaching so that have stress. to be met. And we can't yeah. really be spending excessive amounts of time in, in the discipline aspect of it, even though, believe it or not, I was, and I was surprised to find this out in, te in the teacher layout, as far as like what our job is, the number, the number one thing on the list is discipline. Yeah. Did you remember that? It's I know. discipline, yep. classroom management. It's always classroom management. Teaching was like last. That's another yeah. thing that sometimes I, parents don't realize yeah. that because you're not disciplining your kids at home, they've actually changed and rerouted mm -hmm. the responsibilities of a teacher in a classroom. It's right. discipline, classroom management. I don't know. Mm. Um, but uh, again, it's procedures, like, school wide procedures, and right. then teaching. If the parent does what the parent needs to do, then there's no discipline issues. Yeah. Because if the kid's doing something wrong and you say, hey, Susie, can you please sit down? And Susie doesn't go into dra dramatic feedback or the dramatic disrespect. Yeah. Susie's been taught at home. When the teacher says sit down, you sit down quietly. Like then there's no <laughs> discipline issues. You know what I mean? Like that's how I it have works. an example to share. One 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 year I had this student, we were having a meeting and she was in the she was in the room and we were talking and whatever and the student got really um I, I want to say rudely passionate towards her mother and started like <laughs> the mom was in the room. Yeah. The mom's in the room and the student started raising her voice at yeah. the parent. Yeah. Now I'm sitting there with my computer and I, I just, I stop this. I tell the child to stop talking. Right. And I, and I say, that is not acceptable. Right. That is not how you talk to your mom. Right. The actual mom told me to shut up that I don't understand that my, because I, they, she knew I had a daughter, but she was mm -hmm. younger. Right. She's like, your daughter's still very young. You don't get it. Mm -hmm. That's just how she talks. No. And I just accept it. <laughs> you know? I was like, excuse me, what? Yeah. And that's, you know, that's lack of discipline. That's lack of. Till this day, mm -hmm. when my kid looks at me in public and I give a certain face. Right. You can freeze them. This, this is, this is the face. Mm hmm. She already knows. Like. Yeah. yeah. Stop talking. Right. And th she does. And she you stops know, and talking. She does. I know. Because she stops talking yeah, into your life. When your kids respect you as the adult yes. and you give them a look that says they know. But yeah. that's time with your child. That's parenting. You know, I, you know, in my emails, I always sign off hashtag parenting is not for the week mm -hmm. because it's not, it's exhausting. No. Like after working all day to go home and be a parent, it's exhausting. I was a stay at home mom for five years. I could not wait to go back to work because oh, it was easier. Man. It was, it easier, was to go easier going back to work. I, that's the issue we're having staying now. At home. Parents, oh my God. I think parents are taking longer work hours to not have to parent at home. Yeah, I do. I do. Because in the, in the meetings I hear, well, I don't have time. And I just want to scream, this is your fucking priority. This your is your child family. is your priority. This it's not about family. you, baby. It's not about well, you. you know? I, I also think that parenting has become a struggle because our culture, I, I don't feel like this culture in the West is really designed to um, keep families together. It, regardless. And it's not designed to for you to be someone who can nurture your children. I think it's a personal choice. Once you, you still sign on the it. dotted line, once you do what you do and you're pregnant, you have signed on the dotted line. Now you've given your life over. That is it. It's not an option to say, yeah. it's too hard. I can't do it. I work. Like, wake or, the fuck up, you know? Or to, or, I can't or do to, it. I or, can't. or to load on third party people yeah. and be like, it's their fault right. or you handle they it, should help you know? me with it. No, or, man, it's you. You know, I don't um, care what society is this. Or, you know what? It's your child. It's your home. You're the parent. Handle it. Like, that's it. It's still your decision. Exactly. Your you choices. have to parent. You have to do hard stuff. You know what? I think it's Albert Brooks. He's a Harvard professor. He's uh -huh. with Oprah. He says the best thing you could do for your child is to discipline them. And nobody's talking about beating them up. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's like a, you know, Jersey thing, but whatever. <laughs> okay. You know, like we handle, we handle our business the way we do, but I'm saying like discipline means no. <laughs> yes. This is correct. That's okay. This is this incorrect. Is no. You can't do that. This is acceptable. Like that's discipline. Kids are testing you. They want to know. Yeah. Uh, can I push the envelope or am I going to get away with it? You know, what's really painful. Sorry. I'm like, go, I got so much go ahead. I love you know, this. My kids were I'm home loving on this. this, on the street, you know, on the app called discord. Yeah. I would hear my boy, my, I have boys. 
I would hear their friends say, my mom is so stupid. I told her this and she believed me. You know what I did today? And then my teacher called and I told my mom I didn't do it. And my mom said, well, that teacher lies. Like I would hear the kids make oh. fun of the parents. And I would like stay out of the room. And then after they got off the line with them, I'd bring them to the table. I'd be like, so I heard this. What are your thoughts on it? Yeah. And I was like, this is not acceptable. You don't mm -hmm. do this. This is not okay. But like I would hear the kids laugh at their parents, mm -hmm. make fun of their parents. So I'd lie to them. And they always believe me. They always believe me. They never believe the teacher. Yeah. It's like I was I was so like mortified for that parent. Yeah. How would you not How would you not believe an adult? They don't. Like because then why means... why are you, why send them to school? Because they, well, I find that parents take it as a personal attack. Like yeah. when I call, they think I'm attacking their parenting. Mm -mm. I'm like, "You know what? Maybe I am judging because I judge, but right now I'm calling you for help." Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm calling you because I've done this and I've done this and I've done this and your child is still doing something wrong. I need your help. So you have to step up as a parent. But that takes energy and time. That takes energy and time. Right. I think like the biggest factor of the entire episode right now that just resulted organically mm -hmm. is that parenting requires time. Effort. And I think uh, here's another thing. And it stems in, it's, it even stems into people's uh, understanding of how to have relationships yeah. even at a romantic level yeah. in or in the family level right people don't understand that quality time is, is what's it. valued here it's the most precious resource you have if you if you give your kid 10 minutes of quality time every day i promise you you will have a better behaved kid by the end of a month and you expect better i'll give rates. it at least a, be a month yeah, leave it easily and you say i expect a's and b's and yeah. anything less will cause you to be over there at the table with nothing yeah until all the work is done don't reward them mm -hmm. don't let them keep yeah. don't let them keep their agenda or life as it is or no games no tv no friends they no discord no they cheering Nothing till those grades go up. They shouldn't be telling you that they're going to go to a friend's house. Right. If they're under the age of what? what se I would say 17. Like, yeah. what? No, it's... not if your grades suck. Right. There's something that I developed. It's a privilege. Yeah. There's something that I developed with my daughter because sing single parenting is not easy. And I had to. Parenting is yeah. not easy, period. Parenting is not easy. It's not easy, period. Single parenting is is like you have two jobs on your shoulders that because it's Ugh. mom and dad. So now. many hats to wear. So and many hats. you want to be sure that you can kind of stay in the middle of both yep. of those responsibilities. Yep. So what I found that became easier for me is I taught my daughter the value of trust. Mm. That trust is a choice. Mm -hmm. You choose to trust people. You don't build trust. People think you build trust. You don't build trust because if it's something you could build once it's broken, you could build it again. But if you real, if you notice, no. it's very hard to once mm -mm. trust is broken. Mm -mm. Usually, people don't, don't can't trust again. Or, once you lie to me, you're a liar. Yeah. I don't care how much so you change. trust is a choice. Liar. <laughs> trust is a choice. You're not going to choose to trust. You're not going right. to choose to build nothing. Right. I will never trust. I will never trust you again. I you chose. I, I I taught my daughter the value of trust, and I. Every time we had quality time every day. And sometimes there were days it was only five minutes of quality time because she wanted to, oh, she had to do her homework, actually. Didn't have time to always be talking to me. So I took those five minutes, taught her the value of trust, the value of being a trustworthy person, mm -hmm. what trust does in a relationship, and what, what's the benefits of trust, right? Um, now that she is a younger teen, um, I would say seventh grade is when she put this into practice. Mm -hmm. Because she realized the value of trust from being taught why trust is valuable as right. a character trait. That takes time. And she values the trust I have in her, right. that I trust her that she's going to get good grades. Right. That I trust that she can succeed and I don't need to be on top of her. Right. That I trust that she's going to make good choices when it comes to friends and what she does with her friends. Right. That I trust that even if there's drugs around, She's gonna opt to say no because she doesn't want to break the breach the trust with, I have in her, right? In her good character, mm -hmm. to the point that and you trust her in class, to yes, be a good person, yes, to be to respectful. The point, you know? To the point that you know friends want to get her into situations and scenarios. It's gonna happen. Or I've heard even like uh, get-togethers or things that they just talk about, and I hear my daughter saying, "No, I'm not gonna do that because I don't want to break the trust my mom has in me." Mm -hmm. And because of that, that has kept her at bay from a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. 
that would have been frustrating for me to try to teach her at the moment that it happened as a problem right. because I'd be angry that she got into it. Right. But then I should look at myself. Did I teach her why not getting into it would be wor worth it? Mm -hmm. It's worth it because I trust you. You want to have the freedom to, to do like a sleepover. You want to have the freedom to do, I don't know, stuff after school. You want to have the freedom to text me, hey, mom, I need $10. Can you just send it to my card? Right. Then I, you need to show that I can trust you. Right. And if, if I can trust you, then I can give you that freedom. But the minute I can't trust you, that freedom is gone. Right. And that to her is so valuable mm -hmm. that she is very careful about how she walks right. through stuff. So when she wants to do something major, she sends me a screenshot of her grades. So mm -hmm. that I can trust that she's doing good in school. Right, because that should be like a bare minimum. Yeah. Like that is a foundation. If yeah. they're not doing well in school, you know, my kids knew if they don't do well yeah. in school, they're not doing anything else. Mm -hmm. Because that is the standard. That's the stepping stone that's going to get them to be successful adults. Yeah. Like doing good in school. It's just the basics. Whether they it's go to college or not. Right. Doing good in school, being respectful in school will get you the life you want. So to me, that was a no, non, non-negotiable. Your grades have to be A's and B's or you don't do anything else until they are. Yeah. Like, that's it. I don't care if you don't like me. I'm your mama. You're stuck with me. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like, I, they didn't like you me. Don't okay, get I to love choose. you. You know, you don't get to choose. You don't get to yeah. choose. So but that's like, that's a non-negotiable. Like a deal breaker, we say it, you know, yeah. as adults. It's a deal breaker. If you don't have A's and B's, you don't get to do anything pleasurable. So Done. let's talk about, you know, what can parents do to fix the issue they have with disciplining their kids today? Take time with them. Teach them what's right and wrong. You don't talk back to a teacher. You don't break the rules. I'm not going to ask you to break the rules on social media yeah. so I can impress my friends. You know what I mean? Like, just teach them manners and kindness and, and loving and be respectful. And I always talk about, like, self-nurturing. Be good to yourself. Be good to others. Expect respect. Respect others. Mm -hmm. The basics. I mean, those are core values. Kindness, love, respect, responsibility, accountability, honesty. Yeah. You know? That is important. Um, I, I would say if, as a parent, if you're struggling with time, um, to take things off of your agenda, yes, you know, yes, um, yes, yes, yes. And I know people might say, but I can't, you can, I believe that you can, you can find because a way because there's mm -hmm. a way. Yeah. There's seasons for everything. If you want to devote a season and, and what I say by season, maybe two, three months, just underbook yourself. Yeah. Stop overbooking yourself. Those yep. appointments don't all need to be on your calendar. Right. There's a lot of stuff that people put on their day-to-day uh, to-do -day to list that honestly uh, doesn't need to be there. You know, turn turn grocery shopping into something that, you know, you take your kid with you to right. have a conversation with right. them. And they're going to be pouty and pissy at Involve first. Involve them in the right? shopping. Make the list. Make them dinner. Involve them in they the have, shopping. Right. We're making dinner tomorrow night together. Here's where we're going shopping. Yeah. I'm not asking you. We're going shopping. Yeah. You're going to push the cart. Yeah. And then you're going to like make dinner with me when we get home. They'll start like, to enjoy it. You force, know what? The, yeah, they the kids do. that do that they actually do. start to enjoy you're it. You're doing the laundry. And as you're folding, we're going to sit and talk. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like basic, like the basic, like making dinner, folding laundry, vacuum your room. Yeah. You know, like make that like real time and like, you know, like take them out for ice cream and chat with them. You know yeah. what I mean? Go, go in that little sculpture painting with a little like paint something or other. It's so cute. That little store. Yeah. When I see a mom and or, or dad and their child, I'm thinking, that is such. I, I would time. say I would paint by numbers. It's so yes, cute. Yeah. I would say take take things off your agenda. Yeah. And when you take those things off your agenda, use that time um, to mm -hmm. then coincide with the time that your child's not out of school, mm -hmm. and 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 put in some quality time for that. Mm -hmm. um, we're you not know. saying it's not hard. Like, we all love to have a glass of wine and watch Netflix. <laughs> but you know what? Instead of two shows, maybe do one. Mm -hmm. And that extra hour goes to your kid and you watch TV together. No phones. Watch, yeah, watch your you kids' know? show. That's something right. that I do. I started doing then a you lot. talk about it with them. Yeah, yeah, so that she can talk about it with me. Mm -hmm. Because then when she would talk about it with me, I will get insight into what she thinks about you right. know her her journey in the teenage life at the moment. It's hard and I would them. be able, it and I use it to guide her, you yeah. know? So I think as a parent, um, don't always see another thing that I think is be helpful for parents. Don't always see yourself as the ultimate disciplinarian. I think you need to see yourself more as like a, a guide, a mentor to your kid so that, you know, you can you can deliver the information in a more uh, calm and, and less frustrating manner. When parents just think of themselves as ultimate disciplinarian and they're like frustrated because it's like I got a discipline. Then they deliver the message with kind of like frustration in their tone. Mm. And the kid receives it as, you know, my parents always aggravated with me. I hear you. But like, I, I think for like certain kids, 
the kids that they are getting in that. trouble, they do need a heavy hand yeah. discipline. But when they start behaving better and things are smoother, mm -hmm. you can lay off the discipline and be more of a guide. Be more but of a guide, I think yeah. since they're young, they need heavy-duty discipline. And like I said, that's not the beatdown. No, you know, that's not the beatdown. That's the, like, here's what you're allowed to do. Here's what you're not allowed to do. Would you say that quality time with, like, the the parent and the child, would you say that quality time should be something that's, like, done, like, oh, it's the weekend where I'll do it no, then? No, it's every day. It's every day? Mm -hmm. I think I think it's also every day. I would mm -hmm. rather have, and, mm -hmm. and this is even, like, you know, with this is with friends, family, uh, romantically, with my kid. Mm -hmm. uh, I would rather have uh, pockets of 10 minutes here and there yeah. every day where I get those quality time moments with That's them. That's it. That's it. It's 10 minutes. As opposed to just know. Sunday is when right. I do something with my kid and no. I have an hour with them. And they're going to be pissy at first. Make yeah. no doubt about it. <gasps> Why? Mm -hmm. You know what? So what? Let them be pissy. Not, nobody ever died of pissiness. You yeah, know no one I mean? ever died People of die of sadness. People die of, you know, suicide from being, you know, anxious and emotional yeah. and feeling like they have the support. That kills you. But like being pissy without your phone for 10 minutes, like stare at him. Just stare at each other for 10 minutes. Something else you know? I find that's also a really good strategy is like when you're driving home with your kid um, and, and it's, you know, if it's still daylight time and, and, and uh, parks are open or if there's a, you know, a park place that is open air, you know, there's so many air, areas that have that like Lincoln Road, downtown Fort Lauderdale, Las Solas, in your neighborhood. Even might be like just, the area that we yeah, live in, there's yeah. so many like pretty open areas. park space. Yeah. Um, stop the car and like, you know, um, have a Sit snack with your kid there, mm -hmm. you know, and just just uh, just put that on your agenda. Right. Uh, something that I used to like to do. I don't do it as much now because my, my child is 16, so I'm letting her savor um, independence in a different way, mm -hmm. you know, where I'm not always involved mm -hmm. because it's the phase of the life, yeah. of life she's going through. Right. Uh, she, but she, she actually wants to involve me, which is I'm the one that's like, no, I don't want to be in there. Right. I don't want to be in. I don't want to hear their problems, right. other kids' issues and and. Because I don't want to be giving advice on stuff that I, I you're too young I just for listen. me. I just yeah. Listen, yeah. But when she was little and I wanted to just just be a, a good mentor and guide so I wouldn't always be disciplining in frustrating moments, um, I would stop at the park and she already had her phone. She was already using a phone. And I would just be like, oh, Bella, let's take uh, pictures of. Mm -hmm. of the na of nature just take pictures just mm -hmm. you know and while we're taking pictures and she's using the phone and she's excited because i'm letting her use the phone i would take that time to have like these mini conversations with her right and and, and mentor her during those conversations yeah and i found that to be really helpful and also like for my mind oh my god it was it was enjoyable because yeah. i i needed that time in the park yeah you know as opposed yeah. to you know um the cleaning or the laundry or whatever other stupid thing i thought Just i had to come home and busy, do i was man. like i can wait for tomorrow it can wait for another day yeah. you yeah. know don't yeah. don't have everything so programmed that yeah. you have no space for quality time on right. a daily i know so many parents that pick up their kids they go right to the park to do this thoughts you know this baseball of it yeah then they go to mcdonald's and they drive the kid home and then they're doing this and they're doing it's like you know what just chill with your kid under Just book chill. it and yeah. under book it it yeah. goes a long way towards having a healthy happy loving self-loving self-respectful yeah it really it does, and it will be also better good for you better yeah. and good for you as a parent because mm -hmm. you you'll start to feel calmer right because you start to realize that in spending quality time with with someone you love it actually has uh just as just similar dopamine effect as yeah. uh having a drug and that connection that makes them feel so supported and so loved yeah, but, you know they don't. When they get anxious, they think about your love. They think about your support. They think, and I can they talk don't. To my mom later about this, or my dad yeah, later about this. They don't want to disappoint the right, parents, right? So they behave and they are responsible and they talk to you. And you know, once they know that have that, they have they, the, you know, you are their safety net. You are their guide. You are there. Yeah. You are there for them. You know, when you build their toolbox with them, they feel like I got this. I can do this. You know, so I started. I started the video by admitting that I, I have. I did tell myself early stage of motherhood that I'm not designed to be. Uh, uh, well, I, I actually said I'm not designed to be a single parent. Like I wasn't raised culturally to be a single parent. I wasn't taught. I don't have any examples in my family of anyone that was a single parent. Everyone is still married. So I was like. I'm not designed to be a single parent. I'm going to suck at this. Um, it, it definitely took me choosing to underbook myself mm -hmm. and even say no to a lot of things that 
or exciting at the moment yeah. and could be self-fulfilling. Ooh, yeah. Self-fulfilling. Yeah. It took me also saying to myself, right now is not the season for me to focus on this. It's right. the season for me to focus on my child. Right. I gave up a career I loved. Yeah. I loved that it was like, you know what? It's not about me. Like I said, I signed on the dotted line. I said yes to the baby. I said yes. Now my life is about them for yeah. the next 20 and years. And people will say, know? well, how sad is that? You know, you it's don't get to sad. live your life to the fullest. It's, I don't I don't think it's that. Yeah. I think that you you get to live your life to the fullest um, anyway. It's right. just, it's at a different time. Mm -hmm. Okay, It might not be in your 20s or your 30s because you decided to have kids. Um, but you raise them. To but be you're good raising human them beings. to be good human beings. That's going to be a, such a joy. It's a know? fulfillment that you can't, there's nothing can't comes talk close about it. to it. Right. When your kids are like, you know, it's like you look at your kids and they're like, they're kind and they're loving and they're successful. Yeah. They're, they're on the right path to having a happy life. You're like, yes. You and know? if it's meant for you, <laughs> if it's meant for you, parents, like yeah. whatever is giving you the stress to the point of you thinking, I don't have time to do this with my kid. Mm -hmm. Uh, if it's meant for you, it's not going to leave your life. It's not going to not come to you. Mm -hmm. So under booking yourself doesn't mean like, well, if I don't do this, I'm not going to have this opportunity. Um, not look, about you. Uh, this Sorry, is thing, but it's not some about parent, you But this is something that some adults, some parents need to know. Yeah. If it was supposed to happen, it would have happened already. Right. If you've been struggling with not having time for your kid and your kid's like seven, that means you've had your kid for seven years and now you're struggling with time. Mm. whatever is causing you stress that you think should have evolved into something else let it go let it go like shift the game plan what maybe can, it's what not what can i get rid of so i can yeah. have more time with my kid maybe like, it's not happening because maybe the answer is it, with your kid maybe yeah. the answer is is the quality time with your right. kid because right. you know something that kids are going to give you in quality time sometimes a kid is going to give you insights to things that you should be doing right and the, those right. insights will lead you sometimes to the success you're looking for. Yeah. Because sometimes the answer that you need comes from the actual children that you gave birth to that you're raising. Yeah. You know? So I would say that if you're a parent and you're listening, you're like, those two bitches don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. But Maybe we have we kids of our own that are successful and happy. We've been teaching for 20 years. We've mm -hmm. had thousands of kids at this point. Yes. You know what I mean? Go through our lives. Not just students, but, yeah. but kids that have searched us to mentor them. Yeah, for yeah. sure. I just feel like, you know what? You have to just give everything up to raise your child. Mm -hmm. So if your kid's failing anything right now or has a D or they have severe discipline problems, you know what? Make them the focus and tell them, you know what? I changed my day. I changed my life. It's all about you now. Yeah. Like tell them that. And they're going to be another, shocked. Another thing that I think is important to rec remember as a parent um, is to, you have to divide yourself from your kid. Like your kid is not you. You can't live vicariously through your child. Right. It's not about you can't you. take it personal. You also can't take all, all of their misbehavior as so, you know, excessively disrespectful towards you as a person. You got to kind of cut through that so that you're, you should discipline them in a way that is, you know, enlightening them to the right way of being as a person, right. not disciplining them into making them feel like the worst loser in the world. Like, what is happening with you? Why are you yeah. behaving like that? Exactly. Why are you walking on the desks at school? What makes you think that's okay? Exactly. Like, what are you doing? What are you looking for? Exactly. Like, talk to them. Like, why are you doing that? Why are you running around the portables when they told you not to? Exactly. What is it that you're looking for here? You know, when you talk to them like real people, you'd be surprised. They will you know? tell you some mm -hmm. answers. They will. They might even share, you know, like, oh, because I'm being bullied. Right. Or because I want to. I'm lonely. I'm yeah. sad. I, feel I don't anxious. have friends. Yeah. No one sits with me at lunch. Right. Because you're always in trouble. <laughs> you know what I they mean? They don't want to sit with you because you're always in trouble. Right. That be the case. Nobody wants to be with. I told my sons, stay away from the bad kids. I'm mm -hmm. very clear on that. Stay mm -hmm. away from the kids in trouble. They'll rope you in. They do. They do. Mm -hmm. So, no, you know, just we're coming from a place of laughter. Yes. And, and me, a little Jersey realness. <laughs> but we're just like trying to tell you as moms and teachers and as women, like we know parenting is hard. Mm. We're just talking about the issues that we see and hopefully we can help and give you some insight. But it's not impossible to change it. Don't think that it's a lost cause because it's gotten to this point now. And now what's the point of doing more? Mm -hmm. uh, as long as your kid is in your life, there is always a point to doing more right. or better or right. changing. And we all know? make mistakes. It's like, I remember thinking, somebody, what are you, fucking stupid? You know what I mean? Like we say in Jersey. Yeah. And sometimes I was. Like, sometimes I made some stupid mistakes. Mm -hmm. But I was able to pull back and say, you know what? That was stupid. You know that what I mean? Let me, let me do something better or different next time so I'm not stupid, you know? Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. 
I think that we've covered some good base yeah. here. I got to go FaceTime with my kids. <laughs> our, our Sunday 9 Ooh, o'clock FaceTime. Sunday 9, 9 o'clock FaceTime. We still check in. I well, ask, how are you doing? Not what are you doing. How, how are, are you, you doing? doing? Yeah. That's the question I ask them. That's and I see, so I want to see them. I want to see them on a screen because they're in different parts of the country. I'm like, how are you doing? And that's so nice. Mm-hmm. That's another thing. Mm-hmm. Another reason why I don't know why pe- parents say they don't have time. You can FaceTime your kid. If you're still in the office and your kid's at home, FaceTime your kid. Mm-hmm. Like, try to be your kid's buddy doesn't mean you're their buddy. Like, oh, are they get away with whatever because we're buddies. No, trying yeah. to be your kid's buddy means you are targeting that dynamic in a way that allows for your kid to be to have a safe space to share things with you so you can guide them so they know yeah. that they are number 1 in your life they're number 1 in your mm-hmm. life and that they can count on you in in situations that are problems and the first person they're going to come to is run to you Always. you know i can't Always. tell you how rewarding it is when my daughter comes to me with problems and issues related to things in high school that she doesn't know if she acted right or acted wrong or what should she have done or this friend said that she should have done this or that she's a snitch or that this and and she comes yeah. to me and I and I help her with that. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. if not, she would have gotten into physical fights with girls at school because she wouldn't, you know, she wouldn't have that that mm-hmm. feeling of my parent is a guide and, and she's not and my parents not going to make me feel like an idiot or punish me because right. I was involved in that. Right. So she's got a better toolbox. She exactly. knows what to do instead of hitting somebody. Exactly. My mom has taught me or my mom says too. like I have them to go to, you know. Yeah. So. um I think we've covered great ground. I hope you guys have enjoyed the episode. I've definitely enjoyed having Again, you. Again, if you don't like us, we're sorry. We're here. We're just we're talking. We're so you know? sorry. This is just a conversation. We're just talking about what things And that a we conversation know. from the classroom about what we've seen right. that parents are oblivious to. Yeah. You know, kids. You're uh, just not aware. You're not a teacher. Yeah, they're not aware. Uh, also, please teach your kids to respect property that is not theirs. Yeah. That's another thing I think is important. So teaching them respect is valuable. Teaching them accountability is valuable. Teaching them um, why having some form of discipline and some form of manners is is valuable. And in order to achieve that, the you have to parent. You have to parent, and that so, requires quality yeah. time. Hashtag quality. parenting is not for the week. No now. hashtag quality time. You got it. Okay, I'm gonna say we're out. Thank you so much for listening. Don't forget to subscribe comment. to mm-hmm. the tribe. Mm-hmm. Please comment. I want to hear your comments, whether mm. they're good or bad. Like, <laughs> I don't take anything personal, so you can like comment. <laughs> Let anything. it rip. Yes, the more controversial, the better. Yeah, well. So, <laughs> bye. Bye. Thank you so much. I can't wait to meet with you guys again. Uh, we have some more cool panels coming up, so stay tuned. Bye. Peace out. <laughs> oh.